There are two different kinds of wicks for kerosene heaters. You have a cotton wick and then you have fiberglass wicks. Today we're going to focus on fiberglass wicks for the Dyna Glow 23,800 BTU kerosene convection heater. Hello 2023, this is my first video of the year and I am so excited to see y'all right here on American Back Road Homestead. If you're new here to the channel and you love our videos, make sure you take a second and hit the subscribe button for us. We have so much in store for 2023 for our learn more, do more, be more community. Let's get started. The Dynaglow 23800 BTU kerosene convection heater actually requires something that's called a fiberglass wick. In order to get to the wick, you're going to need to unbolt these two big bolts that are on each side of the heater. There's one here, and then there's one here on the other side. I'm notorious for losing bolts, so I'm actually just going to slide these in my pocket here. Once you have the bolts off, you can then just simply lift the cage off of your unit. So as you can see, this is a highly used wick that's in here. I'm actually gonna pop this piece off so you can see it a little better. Every kerosene model requires a wick. The wick itself, okay, is basically broken down into two parts. The top portion is the fiberglass portion, and that is the part that's used for maintaining the flame burning, okay? And the bottom portion here, this is all cotton, and that serves the purpose of soaking up the kerosene into your wick. Model number WK95C8B requires wick model number RW16CP. This is the exact wick that belongs in this heater. While you can find different off brands and stuff, uh, it's always best that you make sure that you check the package and make sure, absolute certainty, that it is um, going to fit in your heater. You can't just take any old wick and throw it into a kerosene heater. It won't work properly. The really cool thing about the Dynaglow brand wicks is that if you turn the package over, you'll also see an entire list of all the models of kerosene heaters that this particular wick will fit in. It comes with the little igniter for your kerosene heater. It's gonna be in a little package just like that. Now, the igniter, while we have this torn down to this portion, is located right here. I call it a little glow plug. The easiest way to know if your glow plug is working is to test it. My wick is all the way down, so I know I'm not going to accidentally light this. Push the button. If there's no glow, that means your igniter is compromised and you'll need to replace it. If you have a glow, it's working just fine. You don't just pull it out. It's kind of like a little push mechanism. You're going to push it in, turn it, and then it will slide right out for you. And the same thing with putting it in. You're going to push it in and then turn it. It's got a little tiny spring mechanism in there. And that's what's kind of holding it in place with this. You're going to get the pin in the slot there. I get this question a lot with these kerosene heaters. Can I interchange a... Uh, cotton wick and fiberglass wick. The short answer for that question is no. And the reason for that is that the manufacturer designed the kerosene heater to specifically use a certain type of wick. If you were to put a cotton wick in here, you are going to potentially create a pretty dangerous situation because cotton wicks burn down extremely fast compared to a fiberglass wick. So the short answer, stick with what belongs in this unit because you don't want to be putting yourself, your family, or your home in a dangerous situation. Let's move into talking about wick maintenance. Cotton wicks and fiberglass wicks require two totally separate maintenance processes. Cotton wicks require a process where you have the wick and you're literally going to trim the wick. Fiberglass wicks require a process that's called clean burning, aka dry burning is what we most commonly refer to it as. I actually have a heater right now that's about to do the whole dry burning process. 
<clears throat> the reason we're going to do the dry burn process outside is because the purpose of dry burning, clean burning, call it whatever you would like, is to burn off all of the carbon deposits, tar deposits, stuff, the gunky buildup on your wick. And when you're dry burning it, it's going to emit all kinds of fumes and a really nasty smell. You really don't want to be breathing it in. And just to let you know, the manufacturer's instructions actually tell you to specifically dry burn outside. We're going to let this burn down so that the flame is basically going completely out. Okay, so our dry burn process is actually almost complete. Once the flame is out, I want to make sure that I come over and flip the emergency shutoff switch. And the purpose of that is to lower the wick back down to ensure that it is completely out. Then you're gonna need to let it sit for about five to 10 minutes to let it totally cool down. Now that I'm done dry burning, okay, I'm gonna use an old toothbrush. First, I'm going to raise up the wick so I can see what is going on. It's actually looking pretty good. And the purpose of doing this is to get all of the carbon buildup taken off. Your wick is supposed to be flexible like this. And remember, this is a fiberglass wick. You cannot trim it, so don't be trimming this at all. If your wick was as hard as a rock and it wasn't moving, see how I can move my wick? If it wasn't moving at all, that's a pretty solid indicator that you need a new wick. Looking good. The most common question that I get on the channel regarding kerosene heaters is, how long can you get a wick to last? This is really dependent on three different things. How well your wick has been maintained throughout a season and what kind of fuel you're using in your kerosene heater. And lastly, how often are you really using your kerosene heater? How often you maintain your wick? If you let your wick go so long without maintaining it, you'll basically create such a carbon buildup on it that it's toast. Your wick is toast at that point, and then you'll have no choice but to replace the wick. If you are using dyed kerosene, dyed kerosene has extremely high amounts of sulfur in that kerosene, and sulfur, when burned, creates ridiculous amounts of carbon deposits on your wick. And thirdly, if you are not using your kerosene heater as a primary heat source and only backup, that means you're gonna be able to get your wick to last a whole lot longer compared to somebody that is using it every day as a primary source. So lots of factors that actually go into answering that question. The last big question I'm gonna really hit on is where can you buy kerosene wicks and you know how much are they really ranging? Kerosene wicks are sold at numerous stores. I'm gonna post a list right here on the video for you. You can find them at Menards, Tractor Supply, uh, Lowe's, Home Depot, uh, Amazon. Amazon is even a big one that carries them. And prices are going to range anywhere. This is average now. It really depends on where you live and what's available, what's in demand, what's not. Prices range typically between $10 to $25 per wick. And another thing you're going to want to check too is the price is going to vary also depending on if that igniter is included with your wick or not. So that's another varying, you know, factor with price. If you guys have any other tips and tricks and knowledge that you want to share about kerosene heater wicks, I highly encourage you to drop it below in the comments. It's really hard to cram so much information into one video. Give this video a nice big thumbs up and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye now. Bye.